Belgium. I'm also known as the Igloo Coder. Today we're going to start a series on Castle Windsor and IOC container. Uh, the first episode in this series is going to be a short refresher on coupling and dependency injection as these set up the need for an inversion of control container. First let's take a look at this invoice service class. As you can see the invoice service, more importantly the fetch invoice list, has two dependencies one for invoice repository and one for invoice to invoice listing translator. These are highly coupled dependencies as the fetch invoice list method knows intimately how to create the invoice repository object as well as the translator object. In an effort to reduce this coupling, we're going to pull these out, we're going to dependency inject them, and then use the injected instances. So the first thing to do with that is pulling them out and injecting them. There's two ways that we can do dependency injection. The first way is through setter-based injection, which involves the use of a property and passing in the dependency through the setter of that property. And the second way is through constructor-based dependency injection. That method involves creating a constructor, passing in the dependency as part of the constructor or creation of the class, in this case, invoice service. We're going to do constructor-based dependency injection today. So let's go down here and create an invoice service constructor. And let's pass in an invoice repository object. And let's initialize the field. So now that we're passing it in, we no longer have the need to new up the invoice repository down here. So we'll just get rid of that. And we'll fix this compile error here to make it use the passed in value. You can also do the exact same thing for the invoice to invoice translator. So we'll take that, we'll create a field for it as well. And now we can do the exact same thing, remove this one, change the compile error to use the one that's being dependency injected. So what we've done in this code now is through dependency injection, we've changed the class to use dependencies that are passed in through the constructor. The one problem we have is that these dependencies are still being passed in as concrete objects. They're being passed in as the invoice repository object or as the invoice to invoice listing translator object. To give us a little less coupling, what we want to do is pass in interfaces or contracts for how the object or dependency being provided is supposed to work. So let's go off to invoice repository here and let's just extract an interface for it and we'll put in a new file and include all the parameters on it. So now we have an invoice repository interface that's available. So we'll just get rid of that and we'll go back over here to our invoice service and we can now change this to work as an I invoice repository, the interface or contract for how any invoice repository is supposed to work. Do the exact same thing on the invoice to invoice listing translator. We're going to do it slightly different here. We're going to do a generic interface. We'll do an I translate with invoice and invoice listing. Let's just create that object. We'll change this to source and this to destination. Go up to this and we'll push this member up. And we'll use the generic values in here. We'll take it out and move it to its own file. Save it. Save that. And now we're back into invoice to invoice listing translator inside of our invoice service. Well we've got the interface for it now so we'll just use that instead. So we'll use iTranslate we'll say it's from an invoice to an invoice listing. We'll take that as well and use that as the type that's being passed in. You can see but by using the interfaces we haven't actually broke any of the code down inside fetch invoice list. We've just loosened the coupling by allowing us to provide another class. I could now change, instead of using the invoice repository, which implements iInvoiceRepository, we could create a new class called 
special invoice repository that implements iInvoice repository. It could be passed in to invoice service and everything would work just the same because of the contract that iInvoice repository is imposing on us. So how do we use this now? So let's go ahead and jump over to let's go ahead and jump over to our form. This is just a harness form to show how we can use the code. So what we'll do is we'll say we want to create a new uh, we want to create a new invoice service. We'll create the using and we'll make it so that we have a this should be an I invoice service. And then what we have here is we have the need to pass in what two dependencies we're using. So we could do new invoice repository and new invoice to invoice listing translator. So we could do that and say that's how we need to create our invoice service. The problem with this is that we're now tell, having our form with the intimate knowledge of how to create an invoice service and knowing that it needs to have this invoice repository and it needs to have this specific invoice to invoice listing translator. We want to get away from that and instead be able to do something as simple as that. So the way that we do that, we'll just go back to invoice service. We'll create a zero parameter constructor and we'll construct a chain or do poor man's dependency injection. We'll say a new invoice repository and a new invoice translator. So what we've done here is that every time you construct the invoice service with zero parameters, it knows to pass in to this two parameter invoice service, a new invoice repository and a new invoice to invoice listing translator. Not an ideal scenario. Although it works fine inside the form, our code looks good, it compiles, we can go ahead and run the next line of code where we could say fetch all invoice list and put it into an enumerable. It'll work just fine. It'll use the correct in invoice repository and it'll use the correct invoice to invoice listing translator. But if we're back in the invoice service, we have this problem of now we have intimate knowledge again in here for how to use, or what dependency, what concrete dependency should be used. This is what we want to be removing. So we want to take this and drop that off. Ideally, we want to be back to having no zero parameter constructor. This is where an inversion of control container comes into the mix. That'll be the next uh, session that we do, the next screencast. We'll talk about Castle Windsor, IOC container. We'll talk about the introduction to it, creating an uh, instance of Castle Windsor, getting it so that it can provide a instance of an object back to the calling code as well. So a quick review of what we've done here. We've taken and basically just refactored code. So it went from having high coupling and newing up of objects inside the fetch invoice list method on the invoice service uh, class to dependency injecting in contracts or interfaces instead of concrete dependencies.